last two friends. I'm Christy. I'm the Crosshatch Quilter. I am so excited to be visiting with you here today. It's been way too long. I hope everyone feels welcome here and thank you for spending some time with me. I have had a few people um, message me on Instagram and ask me how I'm doing and if I'm going to be making a video soon and I am so appreciative of people checking in on me. We're doing great. We actually moved. Um, it was a long process to get here, but we're finally in our, our new to us house. Um, in June, right after my last video, we had put our house up for sale and it went under contract right away, but then it just dragged on and on and on. And three extensions later, we finally closed. Um, we, in preparation to move the original settlement date, we had moved all of our stuff out into storage and we were sleeping on mattresses and had like two kitchen chairs and <laughs> a TV in our house. Um, so it was a little bit of, you know, camping inside our house for a oh, month and a half, but it all worked out. And during that time we got COVID for the second time this year and that round really hit us hard. So we were thankful to be in the house, <laughs> still be in our house at that time with air conditioning and a few comforts of home. And then our house finally sold and closed and then we um, were going to build a home. We'd purchased a piece of land and had met with a builder, but after discussing prices and going, the, the prices kept going up and up, um, we decided that for us personally, it wasn't our, it wasn't the best time for us to build. So we started looking at existing real estate and we just got super lucky. Um, the prices went down and the house that we wanted had been under contract and it had fallen through. Um, but we got the house that we just super love and it checks off all the boxes for both my husband and I of the things that were important to us. Um, so we're super excited and I think that we did well. We, we bought for less than what we could have built this house for. So. I think that we're just, we're thankful to finally be here. It's been a long process. During that time period, in between um, selling our house, we lived in our fifth wheel for a couple months. So, and in the heat of summer, and the heat of summer, the air conditioning units in fifth wheels do not keep up. So it was like 95 in our trailer on certain days, and it just, we just made it through it. And we're just that much more appreciative for being in our home now. <laughs> but um, I've been having fun decorating. As you can see at the beginning of my video, I've been decorating for Halloween and for fall. And I've just been enjoying, um, re, you know, repositioning and redecorating the house um, differently than I had my last house. So it's been really fun. Um, back here behind me, I so I'm in my sewing room. This is actually one of two sewing rooms that I have because in my last house, my sewing room was bigger and um, I needed a place for a cutting table and uh, a sewing room. Um, uh, so I basically have like a work room where I make project bags and I cut fabric out and I work in there. And then this is my personal room where I stitch and sew. Um, behind me is my grandma my great great grandmother's treadle machine and I didn't I didn't have enough room in my last house to have it open and everything and it's just been really fun to have it open and being able to be more displayed I believe that this is a pheasant singer um I tracked down the information on the internet you can get on underneath the sewing machine get its serial number and it was made in 1901 so my great great grandfather was a tailor and I don't know if he used this for his personal use or for his business of tailoring. I'm assuming that he used it for both. Um, but I'm so thankful to have it. It has been passed down from generation to generation and I'm just very thankful to, that I was the one that got to have it. Um, my aunt had it for a few years and then she put it in my grandma's house um, and then my aunt's house burned down. So it's just lucky that it's still here. So I'm just super thankful for that. And then this quilt that is hanging up um, above it is 
Twirl by Fig Tree Quilts. And I love getting this out each year. It's one of my very favorite quilts I've ever made. Um, it has piecing and then the stems are applique. I have noticed that with Fig Tree's new fabric line, Cinnamon and Cream, they are re-releasing a new, or a kit for this. And they did it in um, a cream background, or then they did a dark background with like lighter leaves. It's so pretty. And they've changed the pattern just a little bit so that the stems are no longer, you don't have to do applique on them. So I'm tempted to make the darker version, but I probably won't. I have I have too many other, I need to not squirrel so much. I need to just stay focused. Um, but I've really enjoyed this room. I'm calling this my off season room, which what I mean by that is, so if out in the family room I have Halloween, then I'll have fall in here. And then once Halloween's over, I'll take all the fall decor out there and I'll probably bring in Christmas in here until it's time to put up Christmas. Fourth of July, I'm just gonna rotate them because I, I hate to not have my do, all my cross stitch out even though it's not the, you know, the season that we're in. But um, thank you for spending time with me. I'm super excited today to talk to you about my stitching. I don't have as much done as I normally do. Um, during all of those things, I just lost my stitching bug and just didn't have the headspace or the time or the energy to, to stitch. Um, we also got a brand new puppy. Um, so Gus has a little sister. Her name is Hazel and she has been a lot of work. <laughs> um, and I must have been just glutton for punishment uh, on top of everything else going on. We just added a cherry on top of it. It's been fun and she's a sweetheart. I'll bring her in to say hello a little bit later. Um, but I do have some finishes, some whips, some starts, and some cro a little bit of crochet and quilting to share with you today. So let's get started. My first finish that I was able to get done, I just barely got done on the very last day of September, and that is Jane Tyndall. And I, it's by Needlework Press. I don't have the chart with me. I can't find it right now. <laughs> You know how it is when you move. Moving is so much more work than I, I, I forgot how much work it is. I think it, we lived in our last house for 14 years. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little tired, uh, but so forgive me for not having the chart, but this is my finish on Jane Tyndall. I stitched it with all the called for silks and I stitched it on, um, gray by Weeks Dye Works, uh, 36 count. And I absolutely love this, but I think my favorite part about this stitch, I mean, I loved it all. It was a total joy to stitch this one. Um, and I loved all the fill in when I finally did get back into stitching after a couple months, it was so fun to just do the fill in. Um, that was pretty much all the brain power I had left at that point. But um, this red cow is one of my favorite things on it. My husband really likes this sampler a lot. So I put my grandmother's, my paternal grandmother's um, name on this one. I talked a little bit about her last time, but she, her and I crossed the veil on the same day. She um, passed away in the morning time. Sorry, I didn't mean to get emotional there. Um, she crossed, she passed away in the morning and I was born in the late afternoon. Or evening <clears throat> and um, I'm just so much like her uh, from people that I've talked to like my aunts and my dad um, we both are allergic to horses well she thought she was allergic to horses it's actually hay that I'm allergic to um, so much so that one summer she had to leave the farm and just go and stay with her sister that was living in a nearby town that didn't live on a farm and she was just miserable. Um, when I'm around hay, my eyes like close up and I can't, I mean, it's just, I'm so allergic to it. And that's really the only thing that I know of for sure that I'm allergic to. I'm a little bit allergic to cats, but not like big time. So, um, but she was a quilter and she just, uh, my dad says that I remind her of her. I remind him of her. So I am just so excited to have a sampler with her name on it. Um, we both are quilters and I love to um, think about her and 
when I'm sewing and I wish I could have met her, but she, she definitely left a legacy. So there is Jane Tyndall and I'm super excited to have that one done. It will go on my sampler wall, which I change all the names um, of samplers that I stitch to my family. That way, um, you know, it means a little bit more to like my daughter and my son, you know, years down the road that they have family on their, their wall. Um, and then my next finish, I was super excited to get this one done. I just finished it. And this is Bounty Sampler by Plum Street Samplers. I started this one up camping in June with Lori and there's my finish. I stitched this on the called for linen, which is 36 count stars hollow blend by R and R and with all the call for threads. I love it. It was so fun to stitch these leaves. Um, in my new house, I have a lot of big um, mature trees and they all have been changing every color of the rainbow. And so it's just been fun to, uh, it will always remind me of camping with Lori and moving into the house because I finished it here. And then um, this over one, I finished the other day. I wasn't going to put it in, but then I decided that it deserved to have that there. And it says, be ye thankful and good. I just love this so much. So I can't wait to um, find a frame for it. I, I may have one that will work for it. I'll just have to dig up my frames out of, out of my boxes when I get to that point. <laughs> um, there's a lot of things that are MIA right now. I'm just like, you know, an Easter egg hunt trying to find stuff. So then um, I started this last year. I'll put in a picture here of where it was before. I just had a teeny tiny start, but this is Goodness and Plenty by Plum Street Samplers. And I started with this one and I got this finished this week. And I'm stitching this on 36 count parchment by Weeks Dye Works. So I really wanted to finish this, fully finish it before my video, but I can't find my finishing supplies yet. So it will have to wait until next video. I can't wait to get this into a doble for the season. And I'm planning on stitching both the um, line of crows there that says goodness and plenty and then the little sampler as well. Okay, and then my last finish, and I just finished this yesterday, is Lolly's Crows and Candy Corn. And this is by Brenda Gervais of With I Needle and Thread. This is an exclusive for her website, Country Stitches Online. And it comes with the little candy corn, some black jawbreakers, and a little tray that you paint and follow her instructions on how to do that. So I am anxious to get this finished as well. I can't find my Halloween fabrics. And I know that I have some gingham bows, so I, I'm planning on finishing it just like she has there in the picture. And here is my finish. Oh, I love this one so much. It was so fun to stitch. And I have um, a little dough bowl by my Halloween um, quilt in the, by the front door that I'm anxious to get this in. And some little pumpkin people. So I'm, I can't wait. I wanna find my stuff but I'll get it finished for next year. Um, this has a little bit of over one. So I stitched this with all the called for threads except for the purple. I didn't have um, ultraviolet by weeks. So I just put in a DMC that was similar. And then this has a little bit of over one and it is the basket handle. So it's not bad though. It went by pretty quick. I um, stitch in hand and I usually have to do over one by with the stabbing method. But this one I could figure out how to do with just the sewing method. So it went by pretty fast. But it's so cute. Um, like I said, this is an exclusive on Brenda's website. There is another one on there I'm dying to get. I can't remember the name of it, but it's a gingerbread house with little cute gingerbread people on each side of the house. And I stalk that website all the time to see if... Um, so every once in a while she'll release more kits of these. So I just look, be on the lookout for that if you want to stitch that one as well. And then um, those are all of my cross stitch finishes. And now we're on to whips and starts. My first whip, um, 
I don't have very much progress on it, to be honest. I um, I started working on it and then I just, once, once seasonal stitching, really, I'd say September through December, I just want to do seasonal stitching. And so uh, any extra time that I have, I want to stitch on seasonal or one sampler, you know, in between those things. But I've got this in my, um, his eye is on the sparrow bag and it has a cute little bird here. And I'm stitching this with my good friend Christine from Hollis Hands Creates. And this is um, our Sunday stitch. Uh, His Eyes on the Sparrow by Heartstring Samplery. I will insert a picture here of where I was last time. And I don't have that much progress, but I have a little bit. This is being stitched on 36 count, 36 count Heartland by Picture This Plus. And I absolutely love this. I... I love the colors. I love all the animals. I'm definitely, you know, not going to give up on this. I, I plan on getting right back to it after the holidays, but I think for the, for now, I will probably, um, use any stitching time I have on holiday pieces and a sampler. So, but I love that. And I love the meaning of it as well. So when I was in, I went on a trip in August, um, to Salt Lake to visit my family and I got to spend a day with Lori and as soon as I walked into her sewing room I froze I just stood there and she didn't know exactly you know at first she's like you know and I was just stopped in my tracks because she had the um model of Autumn Love up in her sewing room she was finishing it and I immediately knew that I had to stitch this this is a sal. It's called the Autumn Love Sal. Fat Quarter Shop is hosting it. And so I joined in. Um, I didn't start on October 1st like everyone else. I was trying to finish Bounty Sampler first. But I have now gotten a start on it. And I absolutely love this. But it is the best stitch. And I just love this. Ever since the quilt came out, it's been one of my favorites. Um, I have my floss, all the called for floss on the floss keeper. Matching. Everything has to match, right? It makes it more fun. And then here is my start and my progress so far. And of course I had to get the matching needle minders. I'm stitching this on Cream and Sugar by Fibers on a Whim, I believe. So I have really, lately I really like re repetitive stitching. I didn't used to, but I think it's because it's just comforting. And um, so I've really been working on these stars this last week. And then I really enjoy doing a border as well. So I'm, I'm, my goal is to get all the border um, stitched and these stars and then do the fill-in after. I think that it is going to be just a fun, those fill-in, the little boxes fill in pretty quick. So I've really been enjoying stitching this along with all of you and Lori and Kimberly at the Fat Quarter Shop. What a fun, I'm just, it'll be fun to have the cross stitch and the quilt finished um, and, you know, being displayed at the same time. So there's that start. And I hope to show you more progress on that next time. And then my friend Yvette, she had a big birthday in October. And I've known that I was going to start this all year long. Um, with everything going on, I... I, at the beginning of the year, hoped to have had more finishes behind my belt, some more hands across the sea, sea finishes, but you know, life just happened. But I still wanted to, to start this um, sampler with her to help her celebrate her birthday. And um, I have many samplers started now. I'm, I can't start any more samplers until I finish a few. <laughs> you keep me to my word on that one. Um, but I am stitching this with um, Olivia from Pumpkin Hollow Quilts and Becky from Socks for Mum and Yvette who is Yvette Go on Instagram and this is Elizabeth Furness from Hands Across the Sea. I've wanted to stitch this forever. I've had it kitted for several years so when Yvette um, said that this was her birthday choice start um, at the beginning of the year I'm like well I'm gonna definitely I'm gonna definitely stitch it with you. So I've got this one in my fig tree quilts. This is tapestry line 
It's an old out of print line. I don't have any more of this fabric. Some of it has been thrown into this quilt as well, but it is one of my very favorite lines from them. And here is my start. So I went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth on what linen to stitch this with. I, I do have the called for uh, vintage sand dune, but I, I really love my um, Hands Across the Sea sampler and Ufendel, and it's stitched on baby sheep. And I kind of want to display them together. And so I am stitching this on, and the colors just look great on this. When I did a floss toss, I went back and forth. I was asking Haley, my daughter, and I was asking my husband, and they both were like, I don't care. <laughs> but um, do whatever you want. But I just finally decided that I wanted to do it on this linen. And I'm using the um, Averisoi silks, the called for. It is so much fun to stitch all those pretty colors. Um, so what we're planning on doing as, as a group is stitching one page um, a month. And the pages differ. My book has 20 pages, but Yvette's has 12, which will be perfect for the year. So we're following her um, pages plan. So to for me to be finished for this month, and this is what I'll be working on the next few days, is I have an angel and then the big flower and a couple more carnations. I'll show you on the... So I need to finish this flower and this little um, angel and a couple of the carnations. So I'm going to be busy doing that. So I'm excited to show you my progress on that next time as well. Then, um, so I've got those two whips. I've got Autumn Love and um, Elizabeth Furnace that are my whips. And then I want to throw in another seasonal small. So I now that I have finished the other two, I wanted to grab a couple and get them finished before I move on to Christmas stitching. So I've been kind of I don't want to start anything though. I've got several old, old whips because um, I'm a squirrel, right? Um, that I haven't finished. So I've been, I went through all of my stash um, this week so that I could show you what I am pondering. But this is another bag of mine. This is um, fig tree oranges, pumpkin quilt. And in here, I've got a few that I started. I believe last, yes, I believe I started this one last year, uh, Camping with Lori and my good friend Annette, and this is Autumn in Baltimore. Love this one. This might be the one that wins. I don't know. We'll see. I'll have to just let you know next time. So all that I got accomplished was the pumpkin, and then I started on the squirrel. There's a little squirrel bum right there. That's it. So... I believe this is stitched on 36 count. Um, it's a white by Lakeside Linens. It might be, I don't remember. I know that it's a Lakeside Linen. Um, the pattern calls for 40 count to put it on this box that Brenda has um, got there on her display. I think what I'm gonna do is make mine into a drum. That way it doesn't matter what count I am stitching it on. But I absolutely love that. So there's, this is where I've started. And then I believe there's two or three more of these on each side. And I'll get that finished into a drum. Love that one. That one's been calling my name for sure. And I can work on these through November and still be, you know, in the fall mood. It's not Halloween, it's just fall stitching. So then the next one is another kit that is off of Country Stitches Online. And this is I Love Fall Most of All by Brenda Gervais. And again, it comes with these little pumpkins in the tray. So here is where I'm at on that one. And I've made a boo-boo on this. That's, I think, why I set this one down um, is because I made a boo-boo and I need to figure out how to fix it. But it's not going to be hard. I just... I put the crow or this bird in the wrong spot as far as the height of the pumpkin. And so I'm either going to have to add some rows or make it shorter. I'll figure it out though. So there's that one. I This one's being stitched on R&R &R linen, but I don't know the name of it. 
it might be American chestnut. And of course, that, I don't know, that, that one's another one that, that might win. <laughs> um, this would be a start. This is Little House Needleworks Pumpkin Alphabet. I love this so much. So when you buy this, it comes with the um, Belsoi Silk from Classic Color Works. And then I just added some um, vintage Sandu linen in there. Love that one. And then the other patterns I have are in my bag from my friend Annette. She made this for me last year for my birthday. I love this. This is a pattern from Lori Holt's Farm Girl Vintage. It might be Farm Girl Vintage 2. And then she added some birds that is from Lori's applique. It might be from, oh, I don't know which, it, they aren't originally blackbirds. Uh, so I don't know which one, it, which quilt it is from, but I think that was so cute. And then she did little X's. And then she even did an applique on the inside of the bag. So pretty. I love this bag. It's one of my very, very favorites. Okay, so I have more Holland or more whips in here that I have never finished because once the season passes, I just am over. So I want to stitch in the season. And the thing that's fun about, about that um, is then next year when you pull out all of your seasonal stitching, you know, it's you've only got like half to go on a chart. So it's not, it doesn't bother me. Um, this one is Butternut House Keep Pin Keep by Stacy Nash. Um, that is a really big pin keep. I don't think that I will finish it that way. It finishes seven inches wide and eight inches high if you stitch it on 36 count, which is what I'm stitching it on. All the called for threads on this one. And I started this one with Lori. She was up camping and I was home and we both started it on the same day, but didn't know that. And then when we talked later that day, she's like, look what I started. And I'm like, I started the same thing today. <laughs> so we're, we stitched this one together. She finished hers and it is gorgeous. So I've got to fill in the house and, and then there's a lot of fun fill in down here. And this one is a little bit Halloween because it has the jack-o'-lanterns, but I wouldn't mind working on this one in November. So there's that. And then I think I've shown you this one probably like three years in a row and I've never finished it. And that is Boo to You. Again, this one's not super Halloween-y, but I'd like to get this one done. I just got the pumpkin head and the outline of her dress. So that's cute. So it'll be, I'll probably try to just finish one more fall small and then I'll probably move on to Christmas stitching. And then this last option is Prairie Schooler and this is Autumn Leaves. I started this several years ago. <laughs> All the called for DMC, um, I believe on the called for linen, which is like a 32 count. And that's her mat. Since I have started this, I think that I want the crow in this middle. Here, I'm gonna take this out of the plastic. So I think I want to put this crow in this box right here. And I started with the house. So there's a little bit of unstitching to do, but I think I would, I think I would like it better with the crow in there. Um, so that is autumn leaves. And I have all the other seasons done for winter, spring, and summer. So this is my last season of the prairie schooler seasons that I need to complete. So, and I love this one. This is probably my favorite one out of the seasons. That is all of my whips and all of my stitching. Um, I would like to do a giveaway for the Autumn Love chart so that you can join the Sal. And um, here's the chart from Fat Quarter Shop and um, the matching needle minder. Um, so just mention in your comment something to do with Autumn Love. Maybe tell me what you love about Autumn the most. That's what we'll do. Tell me what you love the most about Autumn and I'll be entered in to win that. I had my um, 
crochet set aside and I forgot to show you that. I'm out of practice. <laughs> These videos are harder to make than they look. But I, so at nighttime when we were in the fifth wheel and just getting everything, trying to figure out what we were going to do and just all the things, you know, all the details. Um, my brain just, I just wanted repetition and I wanted something comforting. And Lori, I'd already started my cro great granny, my granny squares. But Lori's like, well, try crochet because that's always what soothes me when I just want something that's, you know, easy. And she was exactly right, is what the doctor called for. And so I just crocheted and crocheted and crocheted. Here, I'll show you my stacks first. I've got a whole bunch of stacks. I have enough to make um, three rows of an afghan. Um, I'm following her tutorial on her YouTube and she did 12 across and 18 down. So that's my plan. It's going to be a big afghan. So right now I've got to connect three rows together. That is my next goal um, to make this afghan and then I'll continue to make granny squares. So I'm really excited to do the next step on this and see how it all looks together. But these are so much fun to make and her instructions on her YouTube videos are just perfect. They're super fun to make. I chose to do, um, so I'm using her chunky thread and I just chose autumn colors that, um, I think the only colors that I didn't put in here was the light gray and the blues out of her, and maybe pinks out of her um, chunky threads that are available. But I really, a lot of the colors are just so autumnal. They're so, I'm so excited about this project. I love it. And um, I have a walkout basement and a deck um, in my backyard. And that was one of my favorite things in the new to us house. And I love to sit out there on the deck and just crochet now it's getting cold. I think it's in the 30s right now. Um, so I have to wait till like midday, but I usually will go out there and either um, work on a square or tie in some of the threads. I still have to do that on a whole bunch of them so I can get these three rows together. So um, I think that once you start, somebody asked me on my Instagram once I posted this, if it's a hard thing to learn and it really, really isn't. Her video tutorial is perfect. And then it's really muscle memory. So your first couple squares are a little bit awkward maybe, especially the first round. But then after that, it's complete muscle memory and it's just easy and comforting um, crocheting after that. So it's been so fun. Thanks for letting me share that with you. <laughs> Even for how long it's been since I've videoed, as soon as I told Gus, come on and get in the camera, he came running in here. He knew exactly what I meant by that. He's a smart boy. I think he understands everything I tell him. Um, but like I mentioned, we got a new puppy and she is a French bulldog. Her name is Hazel and she is my daughter's dog. And at first Gus wasn't a hundred percent sure what he thought because she's kind of like a little ankle biter. <laughs> she'll like be on her way to get water or something. And she'll just bite him on her way. And she likes to antagonize him, but, um, they have grown to be really good buddies and they love going on walks. That is part of my favorite part of um, having them is they just are so fun. They they love going on their walks. But uh, here she comes. Oh, I can hear her. I told my daughter to bring her up. Hi, Ethel. I had to grab her wet after she calmed down a little bit and so she could say hi. This is Hazel. And she, like I mentioned, she's my daughter's dog. And she sleeps with Haley, but she absolutely loves all of us. And we love her. She's um, four months old and she just loves Gus and is so much fun. She's going to be my little exercise dog. Um, Gus is going to be five in January, but he, he really enjoys going on walks at the dog park, but he is only good for like a mile or two. But I've already taken her on like three mile walks and then like we'll go home and she'll have a little bit of a cat nap and then she's full energy again. So I'm excited to have a dog that, <laughs> that I can take for longer walks. Um, but that is Hazel and she, I'm sure she'll make appearances again. 
So next I wanted to show you my um, quilt that I received back from the quilter and some happy mail. So the first thing is that I got in the mail was such a surprise. I didn't know it was coming and we had actually moved and so it had been, it went to the old house and um, <clears throat> they had let me know that I had a package. So I went and picked it up and it was these darling scissors. And this is from Kim, the stay at home quilter. I know you all know her and love her. She is one of the sweetest people in our community. But she sent these to me for my birthday in September and I absolutely love them. I can't wait to use them. I've been holding them um, in this case until, so I didn't lose them as we moved uh, to show you. But they're so fun. Thank you so much, Kim. That was so thoughtful and such a crazy mayhem time in my life. Like I just had no stability and I just felt like life was cray cray. Um, so, and then the next one, um, Trudy with uh, True Treasures One here on Instagram had sent me the cutest ornament for my tree that I display around Christmas time. But um, I usually display a tree in my sewing room year round. And she had this laser cut and made for my sewing for my tree. I love it so much. So I'm going to keep that up year round, of course. Okay, so the next thing that I have to show you is a quilt back from the quilter and it means so much to me because I finished it at the old house. It was the last quilt that I um, completed there and then it was my first quilt that I received back in the new house quilted from the Long Armor and that is Flea Market um, quilt by Lori Holt of Be My Bonnet and it was a sew along with a fat quarter shop. So I sent my quilt over to Jennifer with Keystone Sisters Quilting, and I will link her below, but here is her card. And she did the most fabulous job. I This is my first time using her, and um, this is who Nicole with Nicole's Needlework sends her quilts to as well. But Jennifer does an amazing job, and she is offering a discount to my followers. Um, if you message her and mention my name, she will give you a discount on your quilt. Um, now through the end of December, um, and I promise you won't regret it, she did the most amazing job. So hang on one second and let me grab the quilt. <laughs> if you can hear a dog rolling around, he's in here on the bottom of the quilt just snuggling it and he likes to roll around on him. But this is my flea market quilt and this is my Lori Holt of Be My Bonnet and I did it with a combination of reproduction fabrics and Lori's fabrics. I absolutely love it. She did such an amazing job on the quilting. It's just a simple stipple which is what I wanted. Sorry we dropped the quilt. <laughs> Here's this last bottom half of the quilt. My little helper wants to hide behind it and not be seen. I don't blame her. She's camera shy today. But here's the bottom uh, baskets. It is super, super pretty. And we're gonna go forward a little bit, Haley. I'm gonna show them the quilting on it. Hope you can see the stippling on there. It's like a three ring circus around here trying to show quilts with two dogs wrestling on the bottom of it and not dropping it. <laughs> um, but thank you so much, Jennifer, for doing such an amazing job. And like I said, if you wanna send Keystone Sisters Quilting Your Quilt and mention me um, between now and the end of the year, she'll give you a discount on your quilt. So I really appreciate you spending the time with you today. I will try not to make it four months again. Um, it's just been, this community is where I have met so many friends, um, lifelong friends and both sewing and in stitching. And it just means the world to me. You guys are like my family. Um, I have a whole bunch of quilting that I have been doing and I'm planning on doing a separate quilting video. I will probably try and do those quarterly so that you can see what I've been up to and then I might may show a few blocks here and there on my videos for floss too. But, but, um, so I'll be doing a quilting video here soon and I hope that you all have a great rest of your autumn. Enjoy those fall leaves if you have them and the cool crisp air. Till next time, happy stitching.